Okay. Now, we have talked about the final sub-circuits, and then some of them we are going to see how they are controlled. Now, for the lighting control, we have got what we call Singapore one-way switch. The schematic symbol is usually something like that. Remember, when we met, I gave you an assignment to do symbols. Here, I'm giving you the symbol. So this would be the schematic symbol. And then it has also got a wiring symbol. Now, this single pole one way is simply used to control lighting points or points from one position. Now, in this case here, if you have got a circuit like that, So this is a single pole, one we switch. Now this one is used to control the functions of these two lamps here. They can be connected like that one, or an easier way would be to connect them like that. So it's simply one way. It's connecting them on and off. And of course, this one will be the schematic. Remember, in our examinations, you may be asked to do the schematic as well as the wiring. Now the wiring will be having the live, then we have our switch there, and then we move on to our lights. Now I think what we learned from our first year is that in the normal way, all our bulbs are rated at 240, so they are always connected in parallel. So that will be our live, that will be our neutral. And as the eye recommends, you should have a nothing wire at any of these points. It will be something like that. The life, the neutral, and the earth. We know the life, the switching controls, is they are connected on the life. So when this switch is open, the lights will go off. There is no path. When you close it, then the lights will go on. And as you can see, my lamps have connected them in parallel. When you connect them in series, to be some abnormal way of working. So this controlling lights from one position. Maybe you're going to a room at the door, so you might find this kind of a switch being installed. Now, we have got the other kind, which is single pole, two-way. The schematic symbol is that one. Now, this one is applicable. For example, you have got a corridor. You are moving to a corridor. You can enter the corridor in one end, you switch on your lights, and when you get to the other point, you need to switch them off. Or when you are coming from the other end, you can switch them on, and you switch them off at the other point. So this one is used to control the same lighting, but from two different positions. So in this one here, a schematic diagram will be something like that. Now, when we are having the single pole two-way switch, there must be two. There are always two. So that one will come like that one, and then the other one, something like that one, and then the lamps there and there. So in this case here, from the position S3, I can switch on the lamps L3 and L4 on and off. The same at this position here, I can be able to switch the lamps L3 and L off at the same time. So this in a corridor or maybe in a room, maybe the main entrance to the sitting room, when you enter the room, you should be able to switch your lights on. And then when you want to exit at the other end, maybe go to the bedrooms or the kitchen or into a hallway, this way you mount the other kind of a switch. To control from two points. And of course, normally we have used the term independently in this case. L3 and L4 are controlled independently from two positions. So this will be two positions. And then in our wiring,
But again, according to the IAE, we need our earthing to provide earthing at those points. The reasoning being that in the future, you may want to put something here that will be needing an earth. So in our design, you need to provide provision for the earthing. So that won't be like that one. So this is our S, well, it should have been S2, but well, let's call it S3 and S4. You can see when S3 is down, S4 is down, there is a complete path to connect power supply to our two lamps, the L3 and the L4. Now, if I come here, I push S3 up, I flip my switch to the other position, then the circuit will be, will be interrupted. This power will be available up to that point there. The other circuit continues from here upwards. Or if the circuit is like this one here, then I come from this direction here. Then when I flip my S4 to this position here, again, the circuit is interrupted. I can switch them on and off at this point here and also at that point there. So the two-way, single pole two-way, can be used to control from two positions. And of course, the number of lights is dependent on your need or the current 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 capacity of your cables. So that is the use of the single pole two way. Now we have got the intermediate switch. Now they come in three types. We have got a type one, type two, type three. Again, you need to know how you connect them into the circuitry. Since you cannot exchange one for one each, the connections are different. Now, if I recall our type 1, usually they have the four terminals, like that one. Now, for the type 1, the connections will be something like that. So, this will be the incoming in, and this will be the out. Now, the intermediate, we use it when we want to control lighting points from more than two positions. As you can see here, this one can only be used in controlling from two positions. Now, if I want to control these same two lights from three positions, then I need to add in an intermediate switch. And the intermediate switch, as you can see, they have drawn it here. There are two wires incoming and two wires outgoing. Of course, the connections will be something like that one in one position. So this one goes through, this one comes in like that and goes around. And then the other position will be something like that. So this one will come in, go, go out there, and this one come in and go out like that one. So the intermediate is always used in between two two-way switches. So in a case like this one here, I'll need to introduce my intermediate in between the two, two ways. So the intermediate is always used between two, two ways. And this is when I want to control lighting points from more than two positions. So here I can control, control it on here from here, or from here, or from here independently. More than three, more than two positions. In case I want to control from four positions, then I simply add another intermediate switch in between. So if you have a look at this one, see how the drawing would look like. Now in this case here, if I use the type one switch,
So this will be my S5, this will be my S6, this will be my S7. Now we normally use the thick line to con maybe to show one position. Maybe I'll show here for that one, that one, like that one. And then when I flip over, the connection will come up something like that. Well, the dotted line here will be the ECC, the Art Continuity Conductor. So to be something like that. Now, we can see, like this one's here, when the S1 is up, now to know how to operate, you can create what we call a truth table. When S5 is up, the power is available up to that point there. Then this switch is in the horizontal position. The power is able to come there, to that point there, and then up here, and the lights are on. If I flip this one down from this position here, if I flip this one down here, you can see that the connection will be coming this way, to that point there, up to that point there. But this switch is up there, so the lights will go off. Now, the alternative, when the situation is like that, you can see the lights are on. Then I flip this one. When I flip this one here, the connections will be something like that. Then you can see the power here will be flowing from here up to that point there, up to that one there. There's no connection for this one here. So the light will be off. So I can control the lamps L5 and L6 from any of these positions independently. I can switch them on and off here, on and off here, on and off here, using an intermediate switch introduced between the two two-way switches. In case I want a fourth position, I simply introduce another intermediate switch in between. The more positions I need, I simply introduce the intermediate, the appropriate number of intermediate switches in between the two two-way switches. Now that is the standard way of doing it. Of course, there are shortcuts when it comes to the wiring, which I think is not advisable to learn at this stage here. We teach you the professional way of doing it. So basically, in the lighting circuits, those three controls are the ones which you come across. Now, I've talked of the intermediate switches. You have got the three different types. That is a type one. Now, the type two, again, there are the four terminals. The type two, the incoming, will come something like that. So this will be the in, and this will be the out. This can be coming from a single pole to a switch, or it can be maybe coming from other intermediate switch in case there are two in between. And then the connections here will be like that, in one position. And then when you flip it over, the connections will simply cross like that. Now, to know the type, whether it is a type 1 or a type 2, again, you need your multimeter, the continuity. Set it in the continuity range. And then you simply, in one position, you measure the continuity, you plot the ones which are connected. You flip over the switch, you measure continuity, and you draw the ones which are connected. And then you can tell which type it is. And then we have the type 3. The type 3 is simply something. There are the four terminals, like that. So this one will be the incoming, and this one outgoing. And the connections here will be in one position. It will be connected like that one, and when you flip over, it will be connected like that. Well, you can see maybe the type 3 is kind of like the type 2, but connection the other way around. If you stretch this one here, it's like the other way around. But then, you know, stretching this one here, it will not fit into the box. So basically, those are the three types. So you can see, you cannot use this one here and change the same wiring like this one here. You have to know which type it is. So when you are changing the intermediates, you have to test the type before then you know how to terminate your cabling. 
And that's all I want to say about uh, the lighting control circuit. Now with the lighting, we have got another type of connection which we call a master control. Now a master control is achieved by a switch or switches connected in a circuit to control the action of another switch or switches. Now these circuits which I've done here, maybe the operation of these ones here, I want to control them from another position. And usually the master switch is usually to give power or to cut the power off. Normally used in uh, residential houses where tenant had got maybe several rooms renting them to, maybe students, and then he wants to make sure they have lights in the evening. During the day, there's no lighting. And that is simply achieved by just connecting a single pole, one-way switch in series with your circuit, like that. Now you can see that when you insert that switch there, if it is off, I think you know the operation of this switch here. This one will be something like that one. So this one here becomes my master control. As you can see, it's a single pole one-way switch, but I'm using it to do a different function. Now, when this one is off, as you can see, there's no power available here. Even if you flip these switches here, nothing will happen to the lights since the master control is off. Then when I want these guys, these lights to be able to be lit, then I simply flip this one here, then the power is available, then these lamps here can be controlled from either of these positions. So master control, usually in most cases, is a single pole switch to control the functions of other switches. Number five, I mentioned about a multi-position switch, usually a switch with variable, with various uh, connections. Usually they are of the rotary type. It's of a rotary type with various positions like that. Then these are outgoing to some circuits. Now depending on which circuit you want to connect your light, if this is your life, the neutral will be running somewhere separate, then you can switch which circuit you want to light. Multi-position has got different positions. Maybe one, two, three, four. The multi-position switch. In a domestic installation, that one is rarely used. But the master control facility is there. Now remember, when it comes to these switches here, when you are doing your design work, the owner of the building will simply give you a description of if it's a domestic installation, how he wants the lights to be. So it's upon you to think, where do you use your one way, introduce two way, or do the intermediate bit of the design. I think we are going to work out a few examples so that we have a rough idea of what it is. And remember, of course, in examination, the questions will come up in a descriptive manner. You will describe what you have to design, and then you produce, they may demand the schematic, as well as your wiring diagram. So let's see some other controls that we have in our domestic installation. Now we can move on to the other kind of uh, controls you might come across in your installation, domestic installation. We have got another type which is referred to as restrictive control. Now this one is achieved by a switch or switches connected in a circuit to restrict the number of points <coughs> in a circuit that can be used that can be in use at any one time. That means you've got several points which are in use, and then you simply want to limit the number. Again, most likely to be a single pole one-way switch to do the restrictive control. And then we have got a variable control. Now the variable control is a particular form of restrictive control providing on and off control of two or more lighting points to give different degrees of illumination. Now here we're talking about degrees of illumination. In the restrictive control, we are more keen on the number of points, but more or less they are doing the same 
thing. Now, of course, this one, the restrictive control, maybe is in a long corridor. There are those uh, long corridors in buildings which can be dark during the day. So you have a few number of points, lighting points on. Then at night, you simply put all the number of lights to be on, a place where it can be used. And then you've got another method known as a dimming control, a method of switching lighting points other than the simple on and off control to give subnormal. The key word here is subnormal illumination. Now, I said our lamps, they usually operate at 240 volts. That means they'll be giving the normal lights. Now, when you want to give subnormal illumination, maybe you can have your lamps connected in series. When they're in series, they'll give the subnormal. When they're connected in parallel, they'll give the normal lighting. Although the dimming and the number eight, there is a kind of a relationship. Only in the degree of illumination, it will be the number. Whereas here is the way you connect your circuitry. When they're in series, of course, the lamps will be sharing the voltage. The amount of light they are giving is going off. Again, this one kind of used a lot in hotels or uh, in disco places, although there they will not be using the switching, they will be, they will be using the CR silicon control rectifiers as we talked about when we are doing the control of single phase motors. The SCRs can do this kind of dimming, disco places and the like. Then we have got the three heat switch. Now this one is a four position switch and this one in the domestic installation will be used in the shower room, in the instant, uh, we call it instant water heater. Instant water heater, this one is for the shower. Or you can get different kinds of uh, the heating. The off position, then maybe one, ele the two elements connected in series, the two in parallel, or use only one, mainly used in uh, the shower, the instant shower, it can be used in that place. Then we have got the simmer start. <coughs> this one is a device that operates by opening and closing a switch at definite time intervals. The proportion of time on to time off can be varied by turning a knob. Again, this one in the domestic installation, you are bound to find it in the, I think it's in the cooker. Control unit you'll be having Sima starts doing the cooking. And then we have got the thermostat, a switch that operates due to temperature change. A thermostat. This one is can be is the switching you find out in uh, refrigerators. Refrigerators. But I think it's also in. Uh, thermostats, uh, iron boxes, eh? Dif changes in temperature. Uh, iron boxes, we set them are different. When you're ironing uh, linen, cotton, and the like, the temperature, you can control it using uh, the thermostats, iron boxes. And then we have got what we call automatic control. This is all methods of control other than those normally manually operated. Remember we talked about the single pole one-way control. When you get into a room, you switch on the lights. Nowadays there's provision whereby you walk into a room, your presence is sensed, or the door is opened, it is sensed, and the lights can come on automatically. There's nobody in the room, the lights can go off. Or there's movement, again when it comes to security lighting, there's movement in the room, the lights can come on, movement stops, they can go off, kind of automatically controlling the lights or points. Now, there are those others we can be programmed. I think you have got PLC. Now you talked about, uh, I talked about those corridors in hotels. During the day, you need less lighting points. At night, you need all the points to be on. You can program, you can have a programmable bit whereby 12 hours, we know the night is 12 hours, the day is 12 hours.
After 12 hours, they restrict the number of lighting points in use. After the other 12 hours, you restrict the number. You can program that one. It can be programmed into the circuit, into the system. Otherwise, it can also be, also be made automatic. They sense the sunlight. When the sun rises, switching mechanism comes on, restricts the number of points. When the sun sets, the number of points is increased and the like. So, programmable, automatic, there are various variations. As you said, your imagination is the limit as to what you can do with the situations in your domestic installations. Of course, the trend nowadays is everything to be more or less automatic rather than the manual. We have got the manually handicapped. We have also got children. When you have got switches, you know there's a standard height they can be in. I want them when they come in, lights to come on, everybody goes out. So the automatic bits and the programmable is more or less the in thing. And I think with that one, it has introduced us into what we expect in our domestic installations. In the next two or three lessons, we shall be dealing with the various circuits. The circuits I want to go through in detail will be the lighting circuits. Uh, I think mainly is the lighting circuits and then the socket outlets. Those are the most common in a domestic installation. I think that should uh, serve us enough for today. And as I said, most of the installations, what I'll be referring to, I mean, the principles, or uh, I'll be mainly referring to the IE. Remember I said the IE, we normally refer to it as the Bible of electrical engineering. So much of the stuff we'll be doing, if it's like you are connecting or socket outlets, we normally adopt what has refer, been referred to as the IEE. Remember, this one gives the recommendations. Eh? The assumption is if you do what they tell you, your circuit will be safe. Of course, key thing to remember, that may be 99%. Now we are on the 17th edition of the IE regulations. And of course, they are amending the previous ones. So they do something. We do it after some years. Somebody does some research. They amend the regulations. So always, when you are doing some installations, so refer to the latest. I think the latest current one is the 17th edition. 17th edition. And of course, it has made, if you read it carefully, it has made uh, the estimation of our installations to be cheaper in that the drop in the cabling has been increased from 2.5% to 4%. In that nowadays, we can use for our lighting points the 1mm cable, which had been more or less eliminated from most of our electrical sites, electrical installation work for the lights in domestic installations. I think that's enough for the day.